Okay, let's go back up here. It's time for the Stock Car Show on the Performance Motorsports Network. Powered by the staff at Race Chaser Online. Your motorsports, your way, every day. And now, here's your host, Tom Baker. Welcome, everyone, to another edition of the Stock Car Show, presented by our good friends at HMS Motorsport, the readers in motorsports safety. You can find them on the web at hmsmotorsport.com. My name is Tom Baker, and we are broadcasting live on the Performance Motorsports Network. That would be the PMN radio app, if you would like to listen live. It is a free download from your device store, or some of you may be watching us live on our video stream on our Race Chaser Media Facebook page. And next to me at the table inside the Race Chaser Studios is Jacob Seelman, who is really, really excited tonight because he the Spartans guys. of Michigan State, yes. who's kind of the family team for the Seelmans, uh, well, they did something over the weekend. They beat Duke. Yes, they And made they the did. Final Four. As one of my uh, broadcasting um, idols, Jim Nance, has said for years, this is March, where anything can happen. Yes. And what happened is, well, we upset the number one team in the country. What so. happened is anything. That's what <laughs> yes, happened. what happened is anything, anything. Which consisted of us upsetting the number one team in the country and yeah. going to the Final Four. If only I could go to Minneapolis. That would be fun. Well, it would be cold, but it would be fun. Yeah, it would be cold, that's Stick for sure. Around. You are correct. It would definitely be cold. I'll, I'll settle for watching it on TV in the midst of, uh, well, the last great Coliseum. Well, yeah, exactly. Well, it, you know, the Final Four is going to be just crazy this year, too, because... I mean, if you look at the Elite Eight and the way that the games went, the Final Four is going to be insane. Yes. Texas Tech plays you guys, and yes. that team is just scary right now. So, yeah, number anyway. Three, number three defenses in the country. I've never seen an Elite Eight that was as competitive as this year's was. Oh, Two overtime great. games. Our game should have been in overtime. Texas yes. Tech did Texas Tech things. Welcome, Blake Harris, into our chat tonight as we uh, get started with Motorsports conversations, yes. fun to talk basketball once in a while, especially during March Madness, but... Um, it's April now. Yeah, it's April <laughs> now. Uh, so March Madness bleeds into April, and we had uh, some madness over the weekend as well. Yes, Around we the racing circuit, we'll talk about some of that, and we, ha we have a couple of special guests coming up as well. Ronnie Bassett Jr. is going to join us. Ronnie uh, has been on our shows many times before. Of course, uh, he's a Southeast racer who grew up in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, and uh, still is in Winston-Salem, but he, uh, he's racing in the NASCAR Xfinity Series now. Mm -hmm. uh, golden opportunity for him, and he surely made good on that. Uh, his second start at Texas over the weekend, he finished 15th, did a nice job in the Goslin car, and um, it's good to see him getting that opportunity yeah. to drive. And, and I want to add, too, that Mario Goslin had a career weekend as an owner over the weekend because not, really not, not only did Ronnie finish 15th, but the, the primary DGM racing car this year, the 36 car, Josh Williams finished one spot ahead in 14th. Yeah. It's the first ever double top 15 finish for DGM racing. Yeah, they're and getting there. E and the best performance by that team on an intermediate track. They had never finished better than 16th on an intermediate track prior so they to just beat uh, it. yeah, prior to Saturday. So they beat it twice over, which is a they great did. thing for those uh, for those guys. You know, I've been um, working a little bit with that team this year and it was really cool to see, you know. That's a small team that does yep. a ton with a little and to see all the effort that Mario and those guys when Ronnie's not uh, driving the car, he's working on the cars over at DGM. So uh, yeah. certainly a lot a lot to be said there and looking forward to to talking to Ronnie later in the show about the run cuz that was that was cool for them this weekend. I was happy to uh to see that and uh we're going to have Grant Thompson with us as well. He's going to join us uh a little bit later on in the program. Grant is a young racer out of Alabama who's competing in the uh Southern Pro Am Truck Series, I believe it's called over there. Uh, and runs a variety of different, I think there's nine tracks involved. He was at Five Flags on Friday, 
this past weekend in Mobile on Saturday, and Grant is um, a really strong young 13-year-old racer and uh, quite enjoyable to talk to as well. Uh, you'll, you'll appreciate him when he comes by a little bit later in the program. So we start with uh, the news of the day, and I think the biggest news of the day, though it didn't necessarily shock me, but I'm happy to see it, um, Joe Gibbs Racing announcing an additional driver to their Xfinity Series lineup starting this weekend, I believe, in Bristol, right? Yes. And uh, that would be young Harrison Burton. Hang on a minute. Hey, hang on a minute. You mean to tell me that the news of the day is not that Charlotte Motor Speedway is going to put down dirt and run the Coke 600 on dirt this year? No. <laughs> No, I'm sorry. I had to. It's, a, it, it's April 1st. I had well, to see, but it's got to be a plausible story. And that's, you just... know what? Hey, if you want a plausible story, go look up the Hendrick Motorsports Twitter account. And, uh, and Kevin Mendering. Oh, deserves gosh, an, that was funny. Kevin Mendering deserves an Oscar for the April Fool's performance he put on today. I, I won't spoil it because I want everybody to go click and watch. Chris Murdoch's going awesome. to talk to us from oh, the Randy Cam and the Randy Mike over there. Oh, boy. It, it would have made more sense if he would have said Bristol was going to lay back down the dirt and go some sprint car racing. Yes, again. but but you know that, that wasn't, yeah, what, that that wasn't what Charlotte Motor Speedway posted on Twitter. I quickly reminded Greg Walter, the executive vice president and general manager of the Speedway, that if they want to run the Coke 600 on dirt, they do have a dirt track I was gonna on the say, property. See, that's, for that. that's what I was going to say. It would be uh, it would have been funnier if he'd said we're going to run it on the dirt track. Actually, yes, um, that would be an interesting idea. As far as I'm concerned, I think you <laughs> it probably... would take about 2,400 laps, though. That's the problem. Well, that's probably true. But, uh, yeah, uh, you'd have to shorten the race just a, a, a little bit. But uh, certainly the idea of cup cars on dirt is if you just get that doggone splitter off, off the things uh, and raise the front end up a little bit, I think that would be interesting. But anyway, uh, we start with some conversation about Harrison Burton in the Xfinity yes. car because I, I don't think – I wasn't really surprised by this. I mean, I think we all assume that at some point – this was either going to happen or Harrison was going to go somewhere else because Toyota's got a number of drivers over there who are either ready for the Xfinity step or they're close. Mm -hmm. And so eventually you've either got to give them something to drive or you're going to lose them. Correct. And See Noah Gregson. Yeah, see Noah Gregson. So I think Harrison Burton going to the Xfinity car is not a huge surprise to me. I'm intrigued that they made this announcement so last minute to his debut race, which is at Bristol in about, oh, four days. Well, okay, so let's be clear here that this is not, it's not like we didn't know there was something coming. They've been hinting at an announcement for the Xfinity program for the better part of three weeks now. This this was almost back at the beginning of March that they started hinting and using some of the shadowy promo videos of Harrison in uh, the JGR social channels to say, hey, we've got something coming. So we knew something was coming. We didn't know what. I'll be honest, much as I love seeing that Harrison's the, uh, the driver who was chosen for these eight races, I honestly thought, trying to put pieces in my head together, that it might have been Greg Biffle, who, as we know, was announced late last week as uh, going to be driving a truck for Kyle Busch Motorsports, the 51, That's at in Texas in June. Yeah. Yes. Um, so I thought maybe there was a tie in there, but it's great to see Harrison uh, get a shot. You know, he's got some really great races coming for him. He's got several playoff races that uh, he'll be in the 18 car in the fall, helping to hopefully uh, get that team an owner's championship this year. I think uh, Texas, his last race there uh, in the playoffs, but you've got uh, for him, of course, Bristol this weekend. I think he's going to run Iowa coming up in the summer is one of the other short track races and that's a race track that he has had success in in the arca rate or the arca menards series yeah. there's, a, there's a dollar in the jar <laughs> um but yeah it's it's good i think it's going to be great experience for him and i look for him to perform 
very similar to what his teammate Noah Gregson did when he first made his jump into the Xfinity car last year in a couple of the dash for cash races and came out of the box strong. Actually challenged uh, his teammate Christopher, then teammate Christopher, Christopher Bell, Bell. Yep. for a win at Richmond before ending up in second. So yeah. I'd say anything's possible there. I don't think we should be surprised if he jumps up and contends, especially considering that this week at Bristol is the first dash for cash race. So there are a grand total of zero cup drivers in the field. Thank you. Woohoo! About time. Um, yeah, I, I think it, this is a good place for him to obviously make yes. his debut. He's got the experience Pardon in me. the K&N series. Too I, there. Don't, I don't know if I see him as coming out of the box quite as strong as Noah did because I think they're different types of drivers. I think Noah is very aggressive and just gets in the car and goes and thinks about it later. I think Harrison is more sort of calculating and methodical. I'm not saying he can't come out and run top five or whatever, but I just think it's going to be a little bit of a different situation. I think he's, if the car's there, then he'll definitely, um, you know, he'll definitely be there. If it's, mm -hmm. if it's not there, I don't think he'll push it. But I do think that this, this is, makes an interesting situation. Dex Imaging is sponsoring him for these races. There's eight total, I think, for him, right? Yes. I don't know that Dex is sponsoring all of them, but I think they're going to be a big part. Yeah, of, they're going to be a big part of the program. From what he said on the on, on the announcement, they're definitely going to be a big part of it. Um, so here becomes the question: You have Harrison now. You'd think that this is a transition to a full-time Xfinity Series car for next year. Perhaps. Don't bet. Don't bet on it. Um, because keep in mind the Toyota trend has been for their drivers to spend two years in the truck series before two full years in the truck series before they go into an Xfinity car and move further up the ladder. Harrison's only in the midst of his first full time truck season because he just turned eighteen. Well here's what's interesting then because you've had Todd Goland who is in his second full mm -hmm. truck season, except for a couple that he had to miss last right. year because he wasn't old enough. Right. So you would logically have thought he would have been the one to go you to Xfinity. Have, you would have thought. Now, that raises the question, though, because Kyle Busch has already raised the concern this year about Todd Gilliland's performance. I mean, I hate to say this about a kid that's only 18, 19 years old, but well, could it be that Todd's, you know, I don't want, falling out of favor, I don't so know. to speak, with it's, Toyota because he hasn't been performing? Like I said. I've said for a couple of weeks, I really think he needs to step it up, and he just hasn't been able to do it yet. Uh, I mean, because, as I said, Toyota's got a lot of drivers, and they're going to run out of room to put these guys yes. eventually. You know, Brandon Crawford in our chat asks this question. How long does Christopher Bell stay before he leaves Gibbs for a cup ride? I'll answer that one. He doesn't leave. Because next year, LFR goes to two cars. At least that's the yep. common rumor. Yep. And so Christopher Bell, now you would think, would either go into the second LFR car or he goes to the 11. But I don't well, believe right now the way Denny Hamlin's running, I don't think you'd take Denny out of the car. See, before, so, the, before the first seven races of this year, I would have put Bell in the 11 car hook line and sink yeah i don't i honestly don't believe anybody even some people at joe gibbs racing expected denny hamlin to come out and win two of the first seven races he is off to the best start of his cup series career two words through seven chris races Gabehart. absolutely no chris gabehart's been the best thing to happen to denny hamlin and i don't think and i think it's it's a harbinger of the future i don't think denny hamlin is done this year um oh i don't either uh and and i don't want to I don't mean that as in any way being disrespectful toward Mike Wheeler. Sometimes you just need a change. And, you know, I think that's the case with Denny and Chris. They've, they've got some common ground. They're connecting very well. And, you know, Chris really has, I think, put some spark into that team. And at the same time, Wheels is over with Matt DiBenedetto, and I think we've seen the improvement in the 95 car. Um, you know, they're getting used to each other, and it'll take Matt a little while, I think. But I think it would be interesting next year to put Christopher Bell in a, in a second LFR car after the 95 team having a year under the Toyota banner and inside JGR to see what will happen 
in Matt's second full season in the car. I agree. Like that could be an interesting pairing there. So yeah, I, I definitely um, believe that Bell stays, goes yes. into that car. Yep. There is no now. I I think there's one other possibility, um, but I'm but I I would only give it about a one percent chance, and that is that Christopher Bell leaves, goes to Hendrick, jumps to the 48. If you believe that Jimmy Johnson is going to suddenly decide to retire at the end of this year, which I don't. Not going to happen, and Christopher Bell will not. Again, everybody thinks he's contracted to Joe Gibbs Racing. Christopher Bell's contract has more Toyota influence than anything else. He's their, ma he's their baby. He will not go well, anywhere that doesn't have Toyota's fingerprints you on You can it. say all you want about that, okay? Well, uh, uh, that, and I say, that because of, I say that because of the dirt, not well, the pavement. Okay, that's the other piece to this that's interesting but here's the deal christopher bell wants excuse me wants to win races so he's he's not going to be happy if he thinks he's going to a car that isn't going to win races um which is an interesting situation with lfr because i don't think that car even next year i don't think that team is going to be ready to go win races so this is going to be interesting. If it's going to be a Chris battle between if you put Christopher Bell and Jason Ratcliffe with one of those cars. I believe they can. Well, races. see, the question becomes, what kind of a red yeah. carpet do they roll out for Chris Bell? Yes. If he's not going yes. into the 11, he's not going to want to be a placeholder like Correct. Eric Jones was in the 77. We're, so, we're, hey. we're getting glared at. We need to go to break like now. <laughs> All right, let's go to break. When we come back, we will have more conversation about Texas because there's a lot to talk about. <coughs> Qualifying. Three races. Yeah, uh, let's, we'll do that first because that'll be entertaining. <laughs> back with more of the Stock Car Show right after this. You own a performance car and you know how to drive, but you want to learn real performance driving. Well, Bunky, get that car off the street and onto the track. Summit Point Motorsports Park, the Mid-Atlantic's premier road racing facility, located just over an hour from D.C. in nearby Summit Point, West Virginia, is the place to go. And you'll find that Friday at the track is going to give you what you need. For less than a monthly car payment, you can attend this regularly scheduled one-day instructional event in your street car on one of Summit Point's three world-class road racing circuits. You'll receive classroom instruction, skid pad instruction in their cars, including front and rear skid control, and four 20-minute in-your-car instructional sessions from a professional instructor. Have fun, go fast, and really learn how to drive. Call 304-725-8444 for class schedules and details. That's 304-725-8444. Friday at the track at Summit Point Motorsports Park. Green light. Hey girl, school zone. I'm getting hungry. Car changing lanes. You want to meet me for pizza? Stop sign. Intersection clear. Yeah, street. Pizza sounds good. Ball in street? Girl in street! <gasps> it's hard to concentrate on two things at once, like texting and driving. Stop the text, stop the wrecks. How will you stop texting and driving? Tell us at stoptextstoprex.org. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Here's an important message from Rad and this station. Hi, this is Bob Sheehan from Blues Traveler for Rad, recording artists against drunk driving. I like to party just as much as the next guy, maybe even more. But the one thing I won't do after I've had a few is get in the car and drive. Don't blow it. Always choose a designated driver. Remember, music lives and so should you. Automotive technicians and auto service trainees, how would you like to work at the beach and perform for one of the best car care centers in the nation? Lewis Meineke is now looking for skilled automotive technicians to join their award-winning team. If you're a gearhead that knows his or her stuff or a young up-and-comer that has the motivation and drive to succeed, then you need to make this call today, 302-827-2054. Lewis Meineke Car Care Center, located in beautiful Lewis, Delaware, offers a highly competitive compensation plan, great benefits, a flexible schedule, and did we mention that you're going to be working at the beach? Plus, there's a signing bonus for the right candidates. Technicians must be ASE certified and have a minimum of six years' experience. Beginners advance at your own pace in one of several entry-level positions. But whatever you do, don't wait. These jobs will go fast. Call Tim at 302-827-2054. That's 302-827-2054. Lewis Meineke Car Care Center. Rev up your career. Hi, 
I'm Todd Gallant, and you're listening to Race Talk on PMN, the Performance Motorsports Network. Oh, funny. We were just talking about Right him. on cue. Yeah, right yeah. on cue. Old Techno Todd there pops in with a sort of Nine Inch Nails-ish sort of uh, music there. But anyway, uh, welcome back to the Stock Car Show presented by... Uh, our good friends at HMS Motorsport, the leaders in motorsport safety, also want to acknowledge my computer career, training for a better life, and uh, strutmasters.com, the suspension leaders and proud sponsors of, naturally, the NHRA's finest, Clay Milliken. And we'll tell you more about uh, them a little bit later on as well. Tom Baker, Jacob Seelman, Randy Miller is behind the proverbial glass over in the tech shed and chris murdoch is over there as well and we are um well we've been talking nascar and i really want to uh talk some qualifying because uh it's i don't know what it's gonna take uh but honestly these guys in cup i mean i watched qualifying for the trucks i watched qualifying for the xfinity series no worries no worries they were fine everybody everything was fine then we get to sunday or saturday and the cuppers are going to qualify and once again we continue to play games what is the what what is the deal here why can we not get this right well what do we have to do I'll tell you, here's what we have to do. First off... Besides we, go back to single car qualifying, please. Which is what Steve O'Donnell said this morning is currently on the table. Good. Um, but the only, way, the, the only way to make this better is to basically take the ability to game the system out of the driver's hands. Yeah. And tell the drivers, once you pull out of your pit stall, you go. You don't get I to agree. sit in a staging lane on the side of pit road and leave a middle lane open for people that want to go. You sit in your pit stall, and when you start moving, you go right to the track, and that's it. The problem is that's still not going to alleviate some guys waiting eight minutes to make a run. But well, I think it was very telling, by the way, that Daniel Suarez ran by himself and was fourth. Yeah, exactly. Fourth. Yeah. That's not pole. But that's right up there. Well, and I think that's the problem I've got with this whole thing. And I mean, Randy, you could jump in if you'd like. Um, the problem I've got with this whole thing is that these cup guys, like you watch truck qualifying, you watch Xfinity qualifying, and it's the way that this group qualifying thing is supposed to be. Everything goes along yes. smoothly. None of them are playing stupid games. They pull out, they go out on the track, and they qualify. The cup guys are so worried about being in the toe or not in the toe or whatever it is that it, it, the it, package is the problem. Well, but, because but it creates, the package it is makes the, the draft so important. But the package is the same for everybody. So I feel like Randy, the only way that they're going to ever be able to save this system for the cup teams is to cut the the, the round from eight minutes to about four minutes. That's very true. And, and by the way, Jacob, the problem isn't the package. The problem is the group qualifying. But yeah, that um, too. I think it's the, pro the problem is that the, everybody's heads in the Cup Series. Right. I yeah. mean, every, everybody wants to get out there with everybody else because, you know, they feel like the only way to make it to the pole is by drafting, which, I mean, that's true. They're not wrong. Saw, but, I mean, they're not wrong, but Daniel Suarez still got fourth by himself. So, yeah, you're not going to get the pole, but at least you're going to get a good starting right. spot, and that's what should matter at the end. It's not about what the drivers want. It's about what the fans want, Correct. and the fans want entertainment, and I'm not going to pay my money for qualifying to sit in the stands for an hour and a half and watch three minutes of qualifying because that's pretty much what you're getting is yeah, a minute and a much. half at the end of every round right. of everybody going out on the track at the same time. If you're going to do that, then why are you even doing it? That, that makes well, absolutely no sense. Blake Harris in our chat says, I would say do like Dirt does, send two or three at a time but spread them out. So it can be efficient yes. and more time efficient. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, you, you can do this in a number of different ways uh -huh. that, that take it basically completely out of the driver's hands. I mean, I understand that, again, NASCAR is trying to uh, artificially create this drama. The drivers don't like it. And frankly, the fans don't like it either because the drivers are not 
playing along with the system. They're trying to game it. So mm -hmm. you, you, it, it's just one of those deals where with these cup guys, you'd think these guys are the veterans. You'd think that they're supposed to, you know, know what they're doing and that they wouldn't. But, but it, it, it appears to me that you're just not going to get them to stop nope. thinking about, I don't want to be first. I don't want to be first. I don't want to be first. So you know what? We just got to go back to single car. And, and even if you only do that in cup and keep them in the, in the groups of trucks and Xfinity, if that's what you want to do, I don't think it makes a lot of difference personally. I haven't seen huge crowds for qualifying in, nope. in years. But you know what, though? To me, nope. it's more exciting to me watching single car runs because then you know, because usually – I know in years past they did it like revert or like practice speed. Slow, it's the fastest, sure. Forward. Yeah. So when you get to the end of the, when the, the top 10, 12 cars in practice go out there to qualify, it's exciting for me to see which one of those 10, 12 cars is going to actually get the pole. Right? I agree. Because it's always like for me when I went to like Texas Motor Speedway, you know, it was always, you know, like Junior was always fast. Uh, the right. The cars were always fast. They were always like one was at the very end and one was kind of like five, six, seven down. And you always waited till the very end because you're like, is this is this going to be the guy that's going to get to the top and they I make agree. the lap? And you you look on the pylon to see where their where their number is going to pop up at. Right. That's exciting for me. That's what gets me like, yes, he got second or yes, I he agree. got pole. That's exciting to me, not this crap that we're seeing now. Yeah. Oh, by the way, something to uh, maybe mull on or think about or consider. Not only is the complication everybody wanting to sit and wait and try and game the system, as Clint Boyer correctly pointed out, you have to basically be a lawyer to figure out all the new qualifying rules and procedures and what's blo you know what's uh, blocking or clogging the lane and what's not. And that's this, my point that, exactly. The other, it's just ridiculous. Ryan Newman moved up basically two cars and pulled in and stopped directly in front of where Clint Boyer was. NASCAR refused to call that clogging. Well, no, and NASCAR didn't call it clogging because, according to Steve O'Donnell, NASCAR was the one that told Newman to move up. Well, okay, so, so my question then to NASCAR is, why did you tell him to move up? Right, and why? And, and in the end, you basically messed up Clint Boyer. Now, you know, again, we have NASCAR micromanaging all this stuff, and then we get to Sunday, and yet again, I counted at least two uncontrolled tire penalties in that race that were legitimately stupid, ridiculous, unreasonable penalty calls, that those things affect the outcome of a race. So NASCAR, I, I don't know what the answer is here, but it's frustrating as a fan to me to watch qualifying be such a ridiculous sham every, every week with the cup guys when the truck guys, the Xfinity guys do just fine. You're just going to have the, – the only way that you can fix this, if you're not going to cut the time in half and say, okay, you got four minutes, so you better go and get your two laps so you're not going to get them. It, you know, you got four minutes, and that's it. Um, if they can't follow that, then you just go back to single car and just, you know, the bottom line is, you know, it's not our fault. The drivers just won't do it the way we want yeah. them to do it. So not, to be, not to be that guy and, and turning away from qualifying for a minute. Okay. But – I, I, I'm going to raise the point that an uncontrolled tire penalty is a safety issue. See, and but it it's not. it needs to be called. The pro here's the problem with this, and, and I'll try to explain this logically. An uncontrolled tire used to be a tire rolling outside the pit box across the race or across the pit lane. That was an uncontrolled tire. Okay, at least twice on Sunday, teams were called for uncontrolled tire penalties when the tire was clearly inside the pit box. And... Somebody waited just a little longer than five seconds to pick the thing up and take it wherever it was supposed to go to get it behind pit wall. My argument to that is if it's inside the driver's box and the tire changer has left it there for one minute while he goes and adjusts the jack bolt or whatever he's going to do, okay, there's no safety threat there. It's inside the driver's pit box. So... When I, my argument to that is, if the tire is clearly a safety threat, then call the penalty. That's not a safety threat, and I, I feel like it's an arbitrary call that takes the driver off the racetrack and forces them, in many cases, to go a lap down, and then end up having to try to make up a lap. So you're actually having a direct effect on the outcome of the race just because somebody waited six seconds instead of five to move a tire. That's clearly, there was one case, I forget which team it was, 
that tire had to be a foot inside of the pit box. So I, I just don't, I don't believe that, that we need to be calling that an uncontrolled tire. I think NASCAR just makes these arbitrary calls and they're too, they're, they're, they're too picky and they're deciding things based on a computer or on a flat rule rather than using common sense and logic in deciding what they're going to call. But yet Ryan Newman, who clearly blocked Clint Boyer for a moment from going forward, that wasn't clogging because NASCAR told him to move up. Uh, I mean, these are things as a fan, you sit here and you say, well, how is this consistent? It's like they make it up as they go. And the, the less rules that you have, the easier it is to, to not have these situations where you get trapped. The more rules you have, the more frustrated you make your drivers because they have to spend time reading the rule book before qualifying, which used to be a two-lap exercise. That's, that's what I'm talking about when I complain about uncontrolled tires. It's when the tire is clearly not a safety threat. I love how you, I love how you managed to get one more agreement with Clint Boyer in because he referenced having to read the rule. You know, we're reading the rule book as we're getting ready to go out and qualify to know what we're supposed That's to be what doing. I'm saying. That's I mean, why it's like, taking them 14 minutes to qualify because yeah. they have to spend 13 reading the rule book before they can go out there on the racetrack and actually run their lap. I understand me, NASCAR is that. trying to have parity, but they they've got way too many rules right now, and they call they call way too many arbitrary and silly things instead of using common sense and logic and making a judgment like they used to. We'll be back with more of the Stock Car Show right after these words. Do you love the sound of high revving motors and the smell of burning rubber? Do you want to get your car sideways right at the ragged edge of control? If you've always wanted to try drifting or learn to improve your drifting skills, Summit Point Motorsports Park, the Mid-Atlantic's premier motorsports facility, has the expert instructors and the specialized track to teach you how to drift and the skills necessary to drift competitively. From skid pad to open sessions, Summit Point Motorsports Park has the safe and open environment that allows drifters of all skill levels new to intermediate to get sideways and smoking. With a focus on safety and the skill set necessary to drift competitively, Summit Point Motorsports Park's Drift Nirvana is just the thing for you. Call for your reservation today, 304-725-8444. Or for more information, go online, summitpoint-raceway.com or you can email them at office at bsrinc.com. Drift Nirvana, getting you sideways the right way. HMS Motorsport is the leader in motorsport safety. HMS serves the majority of Monster Energy NASCAR Cup, Xfinity, Camping World Truck, IndyCar, and IMSA WeatherTech teams, as well as countless SCCA and club-level racers and driving enthusiasts throughout North America. Featuring world-renowned brands like Schubert Helmets, Schroep Belts, Adidas Suits and Shoes, Lifeline Fire Systems, and even Racecom Radio Kits, HMS has the right product for your type of racing and your budget. Their representatives are experts on only one thing, making your track driving as safe as possible. With locations in Mooresville, North Carolina and Danvers, Massachusetts, the HMS staff is always ready to take the time to help you find the right product for your safety needs. Don't settle for second when it comes to motorsport safety. Stop in to HMS Motorsport. Visit them on their website at hmsmotorsport.com or send them a message on Facebook and tell them the folks from PMN Radio sent you. What an awesome game. What's up with your car? I don't know. It won't start. How are we getting home? Chill. My parents signed me up for the roadside assistance from Lewis Meineke. It was free with my oil change. They'd come and get the car started or get us home and tow the car to the shop. Good to know. With my driving, my parents never know what to expect. When you join the Meineke Car Care Club with a $35 preferred service, you get four free months of roadside assistance, including tire change, battery jump, lockout service, towing, and more. Contact Lewis Meineke located on Route 1 or call 827-2054. When do you think of a plumber? Like most people, even if it's an emergency, you can be confident about who will arrive to help you. For quality and reliability, count on someone you can trust. Call on the plumbing services of Hague Quality Water of Maryland. Plumbing doesn't have to be an emergency. We handle all kinds of preventative maintenance, too. Hague Quality Water of Maryland is family-owned here in Annapolis since 1993. For a refreshing choice, call us at 888-84-WATER or visit us online. COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, is a lung disease that robs people of their ability to breathe. 
As many as 24 million Americans suffer from COPD, also known as chronic bronchitis or emphysema, and half of them don't know they have the disease. If you or someone you love is over 35 and has smoked more than 100 cigarettes in their lifetime, visit driveforcopd.org and take the screener, then take that to your doctor. I'm Jeff Stoltz, and I drive for COPD. Hi, this is Austin Terrio, and you're listening to Race Talk on the Performance Motorsports Network. Now back to the show. Welcome back to the Stock Car Show, presented by HMS Motorsport, the leaders in motorsport safety. You can find them on the web at HMS Motorsport, no S, HMS Motorsport. Dot com and they've got all your driver safety needs they've got all kinds of new things going on over there helmet drying systems they've got radios they've got everything so welcome back to the show my name is tom baker still a little bit under the weather have been for the last week so if i call please ignore it <coughs> like that <laughs> right on cue right on cue wasn't planned that way <laughs> sure it wasn't. Talk for a second, Jacob. I need some water. Yeah, you do that. He's Tom Baker. I'm Jacob Seelman. Uh, somewhere, Davey Siegel, if you're paying attention to this show tonight, <laughs> I'm still repping for your school. Yeah, I'm still repping the Sparty, Sparty yeah. Green. I, I get to catch up with Davey this weekend at Bristol, so that's going to be fun. He graduated out of MSU just like my parents did. So. Ah, Okay. That's the story there. That mean, that's also a story yeah. that, that reminder that there's a K&M Pro Series East race this weekend at Bristol. Well, there is. is. fun. But before we get to Bristol, by the way, yes, we should finish talking about Texas and the fact there were three races. Yes. I um, can sum up the Truck Series and the Xfinity Series like this. Kyle Busch won. Yeah. The yeah, end. The end. Uh, <laughs> but really, no. We shouldn't do no. that, especially with no. the Truck Series. The oh Xfinity gosh. Series race really wasn't that exciting. Well, I mean, um, Kyle didn't dominate. Christopher Bell dominated. Kyle just took no tires he and did. got away. But it just wasn't it, it wasn't the most exciting race of the weekend. I thought the truck race was actually really good. Um, you know, Kyle dominated it. But, you know, that series is starting to become really interesting because Stuart Friesen is an example of a driver that – you know, we talked about him an awful lot last year for runner-up finishes. And then after a while, he kind of yep. trailed off, and we stopped talking about him. Well, guess what? We're talking about him again. Yep. Because Stuart Friesen, Ross Chastain, those two guys are examples of drivers who have really made these truck races exciting. And once we get, uh, once we get to the point where Kyle's used up his five wins for the year right. and won't be racing anymore, right. uh you know, we, I think you really got an opportunity to see some of these guys step up. It would not surprise me to see both Stuart Friesen and Ross Chastain in victory lane in a truck race pretty doggone soon. Well, the catch is that Ross is, you know, Ross is already kind of ahead of the curve with the number of races he was supposed to run this year. He's splitting that truck with Reed Wilson, and Reed has a good chunk of races still to run this year. So uh, it, may, it may be a Reed's case. He's only running 10? Well, there's only but of course there's, there's only, only 20, 20, yeah, I forget, truck it's races, schedule. and we've already yeah. run we've already run yeah. five of them. So it's a shorter schedule. Um, but. I mean, we're 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 getting down to the point where you may not see Ross in that truck too much more this year, especially with the announcement uh, not that long ago that Angela Ruck is going to be uh, in the second Nice Motorsports 44. truck for about 12 races. Yeah. So there's really, <laughs> I, I, I as much as I love what Ross is doing right now, and I really love what Ross is doing right now, I don't think we're going to see him in the truck too much more on a consistent basis as we get into the summer. Well, I, I would love to see him sneak a win with one of his remaining chances. Mm -hmm. And I think I think he's capable of it, just as I think Stewie is capable of pulling oh, off Stewart's a win. Oh, Stewart's capable of pulling off a couple wins. And I'll tell you what, he hounded Kyle Busch in a way that I yeah. haven't seen too many drivers hound Kyle Busch in a long time. He wanted it, and he was that he close was. to actually getting it. Yeah, and, and he's not going to be – Kyle Busch, and I, I, I want to say this in a way that doesn't get misinterpreted, Stewart doesn't care who Kyle Busch is. Stewart Friesen is one of these drivers whose mentality is when, when he's on and when his, car, when his car or truck or whatever he's driving, when it's right, he's going for it. He doesn't much care. If he brushes into you so and gets you sideways, he doesn't care if you get mad at him. You know, I'm not saying that's good or bad. I'm just saying that's how Stewart is. He's not intimidated easily. And 
you know, I thought that was a pretty good race on the whole, even though Kyle ended up pulling it off. Um, Saturday's race kind of, eh, I mean, again, Chris Bell dominated quite a bit of it. Um, you know, in the end, though, I mean, there was Kyle and he wins again. Um, but I, I think this is a situation in the even in the Xfinity series. I think you're seeing some guys start to sort of creep up to the forefront. Yeah. And at least be able to run top five to top ten that maybe you wouldn't ordinarily have thought about. And every time I see a driver like Ronnie Bassett go out and finish 15th, remember, this is only his second start, folks. Um, you know, as, as, he get, as he gets more time, Ronnie is a very talented kid. Him and his brother right. Dylan are both really good natural race car drivers. They're seasoned pros. They've just been waiting for this opportunity. If that 90 car is capable of running 5th to 10th, Ronnie Bassett's going to get it there eventually. Yeah, and, and so the DGM cars, you know, Josh Williams, who's the, te uh, the team's full-time primary driver this year, Josh has told me on a couple of occasions, even going back as far as Atlanta, he believes this team is capable of running in the top 10 on a regular yeah. basis. Yep. They just have to work their way to it. Baby steps is the way Josh puts yeah. it. And they're incrementally getting there. They were 16th at Vegas. Now they're 14th at Texas. We're getting ready to go to a short track, which is a place that Josh obviously yep. has a shot at a top 10 if he can stay out of trouble. And then there's Talladega, where anything can and probably will happen. And again, you're seeing Ryan Sieg and drivers like Mark, that. that are Ryan Sieg has six top 11 finishes this year let that sink in for him yeah minute. i mean again you're seeing some guys be able to at least contend for you know fifth to tenth and that's why i just you know once you get to where it's all xfinity guys it's all you know truck regulars these series are there's some great talent in these series um bubba wallace has been running the the, the 22 truck a little bit um, we don't know what the long-term plan for that is, but we do know now that uh, we we won't be seeing Austin, uh, Self. Austin Self back in it for a while. Unfortunately, he's got an issue with the substance abuse policy that he's got to deal with. So um, I don't know if Bubba will keep running it or not. And people well, say, we well, got a he's month, a cup of we got a truck, month, but we got a month before the next truck race. So. Yeah. So you know, we'll see if they if they get somebody else that isn't a Cup Series regular to to go ahead and, and jump into that. Um, but Bubba's doing a short-term fill-in situation, yeah. and, uh, you know, I, I, it is what it is. I mean, there's only so much uh, you can do in that kind of thing. And he's given that truck some good good runs, and it, it's I'm sure that that input is valuable for that team. Oh, very. The more of these teams that end up being GMS-related, the, the better the series gets, if, yes. you, if you haven't noticed, because yes. you, you've got the same sort of situation. Stuart Friesen had that. And the Nice Motorsports trucks this year have that, and their performance has improved. So yeah. um, those series are – the gap's closing a little bit in those series, and that's really nice to see that you've got some different faces that are running up there. And seeing Ryan Sieg win a, a stage the other day was, was really so fun. That was so cool. Yeah, that, that was and, really and fun. it was proof that ti the tires situation being what it was at Texas, tires didn't matter. You could stay out. And you yeah. Could, you could do something with that. And then – the bonus points for that team, I haven't looked, and I should real quick, to see exactly where Ryan Sieg has ended up now. But he is solidly at this point on the playoff grid, and I don't expect him to leave it with the way this is going. He is currently ninth in points, four top ten finishes, and he has the fourth best average finish of all drivers in the NASCAR Xfinity Series this season behind only Chase Briscoe, Michael Annette, and Tyler Reddick. He's actually got a better average finish right now than Christopher Bell. Let that sink in. And for by the way, uh, while we're talking about Xfinity, I want to give a call to Kaz Grala. Absolutely. Kaz jumped into the RCR 21 first time in the car and the only definitive opportunity that he's got right now for right. this year hot scream was the spicy ice cream yeah the spicy ice cream was his sponsor um that that whole concept we could do a whole segment on yes sp spicy ice cream but um Kaz was running in the top 10 for a good bit of that race until yeah got just a little wide off turn four and got the wall yeah and had it race. had it not been for the late caution 
that uh, erased the fuel mileage game. I think he was headed for maybe a top two finish because he, he and Chase Briscoe yeah, were, I agree. were the first two cars that could make it on fuel, and I believe they would have had a very good shot at it. Like you said, Kaz got forced a little wide after the final restart, popped the wall. Um, you know, no necessarily total fault of his own for right. sure, but he had a tremendous showing, ran in the top 10 or very close to it all day long. I think proved he belongs in a car that can run for a win on a regular basis. I for agree. Sure. 100%. Yep, so hopefully and, Kaz will get some yes. more opportunities. So I know we don't have a lot of time left in this about segment. A minute. I want to at least bring up the point, and then we can talk about the cup race a little later on in this show. Yes. But my opinion, one of the more entertaining Texas races I've seen. I, agree. I think the, the package did much more of what it was uh, designed to do and everybody anticipated it to do. Yes. You had a lot more wide open time. A lot of different. Nobody led more than 66 laps in that race. There yeah. was there was not a dominant driver per se, and it led to a lot of strategy in the closing laps. Obviously, Denny Hamlin coming out with the victory, his second of the year. We talked about earlier how big that could be for Denny Hamlin, and why now it doesn't look like he's going anywhere for a while. So, no, it, uh, a no. lot of good things in that one that we can dig into later on. Yeah. But we've got a couple really cool guests to talk to. We do. Up first. One of them just uh, jumped into our chat, Ronnie Bassett Jr., but we need, to, we need to actually get him to at least hit the mute button on his computer. Long because, enough to pick up yeah, the phone. We're going to be calling him on the strut <laughs> Masters.com hotline here momentarily back with Ronnie Bassett right after this Grant Thompson coming up as well stay with us everywhere you go you hear it and you see it it's coming at you through your phone your tablet and your computer it's broadcast from your favorite radio station TV networks and cable companies it's in the stadiums the arenas the ballparks it screams for your attention at the mall it's interactive on Main Street it's even coming at you from the gas pump at the nearby convenience store what is it it's digital content it's digital content it's digital content somebody has to create it somebody has to manage it so whether your dream is to write it design it create it call it produce it voice it post it light it shoot it switch it record it color correct it edit it, code it, repurpose it, tweet it, blog it, post it, compress it, upload it, replay it, or make sure it gets to where it's got to go when it's got to get there in the format it's got to be in. You need to attend Carolina School of Broadcasting. The skills you will learn, the experience you will get, and the connections you will make at Carolina School of Broadcasting will open the doors to the career you want in digital content creation and digital content management. Call or come by today. Click csbradiotv.edu. Parents, your son or daughter has had their license for a while now, but you want to make sure they're prepared for any situation they may face on the road. High school driver's ed doesn't teach them to drive defensively. They need to be prepared for any highway emergency. For less than a month's insurance, and a whole lot less, BSR instructors at Summit Point Motorsports Park in nearby Summit Point, West Virginia, will teach your son or daughter how to respond instantly and positively to unexpected situations on the road. BSR's specialized accident avoidance training teaches swerve to avoid maneuvers at highway speed, ocular driving, which focuses driving attention on ways to avoid accidents, vehicle dynamics and feedback, skid control, and skid recovery, threshold braking on straights and progressive braking on curves, and off-road recovery techniques. This is stuff driver's ed simply doesn't teach. So call BSR today, 304-725-8444. Give your kid the skill set needed to drive safely and responsibly on the highway. That's 304-725-8444. This is a test to find out if you know it all when it comes to children. Name one of the leading killers of U.S. children age 1 to 13. What's the best way to protect children in a car crash? At what age and size should a child start using a booster seat? Don't assume you know it all when it comes to car seats for your child. Go to safercar.gov slash the right seat and know for sure. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Hi, I'm Zane Smith, and you're listening to Race Talk on the Performance Motorsports Network. Now back to the show. Welcome back. To the Stock Car Show, presented by HMS Motorsport, the leaders in motorsport safety. You can find them on the web at hmsmotorsport.com. Tom Baker, Jacob Seelman, uh, Randy Miller, and Chris Murdoch, also a part of our program over in the Tech Shed Punching Buttons here in the studio. And uh, awesome uh, opportunity that we have here, hopefully any moment now, to connect with Ronnie Bassett Jr. to talk to him about his Xfinity series starts we um 
we definitely are excited to see that for him. Um, Jacob, you and I have been watching yes. Ronnie and Dylan race since they were in Bandoleros how many years ago. That doesn't seem like it's actually, I mean, time has gone fast. The scary part is you're dating us. Uh, well, yes, that is kind of the case. I am dating us. So it's been probably a uh, while, <laughs> 10 years since they were more At than least. that, maybe. More than uh, that. Since they were in bandos together, but they uh, in bandos and legends together. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, so while we wait to connect to Ronnie Jr. here, we'll uh, we'll talk a little more cup because we can. Yeah, why um, not, right? And you were talking about how you thought it was one of the better races, and I agree with you. Yes. And I don't know if I feel, I don't know if I feel that the package necessarily helped the situation. It didn't hurt it. I just, yeah, that's what I was going to say. I feel like it didn't hurt. I mean, it was, as you said, I think the uh, the biggest lap leader was, what, 66 or 66 67 laps? Bush. Yeah. Um, there were a lot of comers and goers in that one. and There I've, really were, including Eric Jones, who spun on lap 15 and came back and almost won the thing. Yeah, made it, it, quite a recovery. I mean, I think it's one of those, if you spin on lap 15 and it's your fault, I think you almost have to do something, right? Uh-huh. Um, but I, I, I think for me... The highlight of the race, welcome back. <laughs> welcome back, JJ. We've been waiting yes. two years for this. Yes, we have. That was uh, that was tremendous fun for sure. He put on a heck of a run. Now, he, he didn't really have much at the end, but you know what? Jimmy Johnson showed his skill set. Yes. I felt like Jimmy was racing. It was the first time in a long time that I feel like he was actually contending for the win um, and was in the race instead of just being on the racetrack. Um, William Byron did a heck of a job. I really, really think that this is a case right here of clearly um, Hendrick Motorsports found something that worked at Texas because every one of their cars were tough. It seemed like Alex Bowman maybe lacked a little bit off of the other three cars, but Hendrick Motorsports was on it. Yes, they were. Alex Bowman lacked a little bit, by the way, because he wrecked his primary car, which I think was every bit as good as the other three cars in practice. Yes. Otherwise, I believe he was going to be a major factor in that one. Chase Elliott, 13th, I don't think, was indicative of how good he was most of the day. And then the 48 and the 24 were lights out in the top five to yes. seven all race long and that that to me was very very impressive yeah i think so i think that it definitely is a situation where we we look at this and say okay this is one race one race jimmy johnson looked good now we go to bristol isn't this a track where jimmy johnson traditionally has run well i mean no Hendrick, no not at bristol two wins at bristol that's it yeah but he's always been fast there yeah. i feel like debatable i mean i i think that definitely the um the the hendrick motorsports team needs to have a run of races besides chase elliott where th those other three cars at least have the speed i mean there's so much parity right now in this package as everybody kind of stepping and fetching, I feel like. Right. So every week it seems like somebody different hits it. But these, th this team needs some consistency. And I feel like Texas is a good launching pad. Then we go to Bristol. It's a short track. For crying out loud, they should be able to race well there. You would hope. I mean, you know, that's, that's really where I'm at. Transition time because Jacob apparently had a old number for – Ronnie Jr. Yes, so we have it, corrected it, that. It, it, it's shame, officially it's officially like my fault. I screwed up, but that that's always your fault. Yeah, well, you blame me even if it wasn't my fault. But it's that on Sparty the shirt. Yeah, something like that. Okay. On the plus side, I think we might have Ronnie Bassett. I think Jr. we do too. Masters. Ronnie Bassett, now. welcome back to the program. It has been some time since we've had you on, and we're pretty excited right now for what you're doing. It is. Thank you guys for having me on. I'm, I'm glad to be back with you all. Well, we're happy to have you back. Um, now, obviously, uh, most of our audience, I think, by now knows at least who you and Dylan are. You've been on enough, and uh, we have a, a largely regional audience for this, though we do have some folks listening from the Northeast and also out West tonight. Um, but um, talk a little bit about how this all came together for you 
to be in that Mario Goslin car because I know I was kind of blown away when I saw that you were going to run it at Phoenix. And then I found out the backstory and it made a little bit more sense. But nonetheless, um, you know, talk about how this came into being for you. Yeah, you know, Dylan and I have been um, in the K&N series for some time. And, uh, you know, with the uh, two series, ARCA and NASCAR combining, um, we began to explore options on things to do and, you know, being able to move up, um, you know, thankful for, you know, Mario for giving us the opportunity to uh, get into one of the Maxfinity cars and run some selected and um, selected events. So I said we're going to try to press on and keep running some of those races. So you ran Phoenix uh, ISM Raceway, and then, of course, last week at Texas. Talk about what it was like. Walk us through the first weekend at Phoenix, because just going through the whole process of, you know, being a part of the NASCAR Xfinity Series for the first time, I know you and Dylan and your family well, and I know, you know, that you're humble and, and, and you're, you know, you're Southern kids, and this just had to be an amazing thing for you to go through this and say, wow, I'm a part of the Xfinity series. It is. It's very different. You know, um, like I said, we uh, grew up racing as a family and, you know, we still do it. And, you know, I said, we have to, to work for what we got and um, we're thankful for it. That's for sure. Um, the step from the Canaan in cars to the uh, Xfinity cars is a, is a big jump. Um, it's very, very, uh, high tech i guess you'd put it you gotta pay attention to the little things and um not that you don't in the k&m but it's just another step closer to the big series so you know like i said everything's real tight and um you have to be ready ronnie so i know phoenix didn't end the way you wanted it to but was it a motivating factor to come out and and try and get what you felt like you deserved there at uh at Texas over the weekend because I, I feel like uh, watching that Phoenix race, the result really didn't belie some of the pace that you guys had. It was. You know, we had a really good car at Phoenix. Um, you know, we had a uh, failure there in second practice causing us to get in the fence, and uh, luckily our team car had a, another car that we were able to start the race with. Um, we got going there and lost brakes there towards the early part of the race. Oh, boy. Just a, a mishap, you know, unfortunate for – all of our guys, they, they worked really hard to, to get us a good car to have a debut race in. And uh, something small cost us uh, a good run, I feel like. Like I said, they all worked really hard and um, prepared that car. And um, we got, like I said, got to run in there in the backup car, and it just wasn't meant to be that day. How big has somebody like Josh Williams having him as a teammate for the races that you've run? Because Josh – has really kind of scratched and clawed much in the same way that you and your brother have to to get to the to this point how has having somebody who's gone that similar path as a teammate been for you to lean on compare notes and really learn as you're going through your early starts in the xfinity series it's been big uh me and josh we've known each other since we were little little kids we raced bandoleros and legend cars together actually grew up racing together so you know, it's kind of cool to have somebody you're up racing with to lean on and be able to help you with, you know, the little things as far as your let off points and, you know, like you said, your setups and stuff like that. So, I mean, it's it's very neat. Um, like I said, fortunate enough to have somebody there that um, has, has done it the same way we have. So we can kind of relate to a lot of things in a lot of ways. Phoenix is a bit of a tricky track, I know, for a lot of drivers to get a hold of. Um, but you you went from there to texas and it seemed like by the time they threw the green at texas you were right on it and and you just had a great run i mean 15th for your team and and especially for you and only your second start that's remarkable um talk a little bit about what that was like to be able to run in in the middle of the pack like that it was great you know like you said our, our going to phoenix was uh, a deal being that we I have run a K and N car there before, being that I had seat time at the track right. and experience there, so we figured you know we could go. So it's a long ways away, but we figured we could go there and you know not be new new to the series, but not new to the track, um, being that I could hopefully adapt to it pretty well. Right. And um, then going to Texas, somewhere I've never been, never been on a mile and a half before, um, and then second race in the Xfinity car. So it's it was very difficult. At the same time, 
Um, you know, we missed first practice with a little bit of engine trouble. Um, got that figured out, and I mean, you know, I'm over there scratching my head like, oh man, I've never been on a mile and a half before. Now I got to go out in second practice and figure it out in 50 minutes. It's going to be tough. Um, but you know, luckily the guys did a really good job of giving me a good race car to uh, be able to go out there and adapt to the track pretty quick. Um, like I said, 50 minutes isn't much time to get used to a 180 mile an hour in a different kind of race car. But uh, like I said, they gave me a good car to go out and be able to race with and uh, get to the mid-pack and uh, hang there for most part of the day. Well, we're going to ask you to hang on, if you would. Uh, stay right where you are, Ronnie, and uh, we'll keep you on the line. we got to step aside. When we come back, we'll pick up and talk a little more with you in our next segment. You're listening to the Stock Car Show, presented by HMS Motorsport, the leaders in motorsport safety. We'll be back right after these words. You own a performance car, and you know how to drive, but you want to learn real performance driving. Well, Bunky, get that car off the street and onto the track. Summit Point Motorsports Park, the Mid-Atlantic's premier road racing facility, located just over an hour from D.C. in nearby Summit Point, West Virginia, is the place to go. And you'll find that Friday at the track is going to give you what you need. For less than a monthly car payment, you can attend this regularly scheduled one-day instructional event in your street car on one of Summit Point's three world-class road racing circuits. You'll receive classroom instruction, skid pad instruction in their cars, including front and rear skid control, and four 20-minute in-your-car instructional sessions from a professional instructor. Have fun, go fast, and really learn how to drive. Call 304-725-8444 for class schedules and details. That's 304-725-8444, Friday at the track at Summit Point Motorsports Park. Is your job sucking the life out of you? Wake up! You can do something else. Information technology. I know what you're thinking, but I'm not a math and science person. No problem and no excuses, because it's not rocket science. It's My Computer Career. Go to mycomputercareer.edu and take the free career evaluation today. You can start your new life as an IT pro in as little as four months. Mycomputercareer.edu. That's mycomputercareer.edu. The Performance Motorsports Network is a compilation of shows about motorsports. From technical to controversial to just fun, everything you like about racing and gearhead stuff is right here on one internet channel. The Performance Motorsports Network. Tell your friends about it. Hi, I'm Reed Sorensen. Racing has been a part of me and my family for as long as I can remember. I had to make tough choices early on to get to the top. It took hard work and dedication. But it's those tough choices that help me prepare for challenges I would face as a cup driver. Make the right choices today and be ready for the challenges tomorrow. This message is brought to you by the U.S. Air Force. Hi, I'm Timmy Salamito, and you're listening to Race Talk on the Performance Motorsports Network. Now back to the show. So you know that means we have to talk about modifieds at some point during well, the show, Well, of course right? we do. I fully intend to talk about modifieds oh, because uh, there was we a had a race, race at South Boston. And I'd like to have about five more there. Uh, <laughs> welcome back to the Stock yes. Car Show presented by HMS Motorsport, the leaders in motorsport safety. We also need to give a shout out to our friends at strutmasters.com, the suspension experts. This portion of the show is being brought to you by Strutmasters, the proud sponsor of NHRA Top Fuel Driver, Clay Milliken. Here's the deal. If you own a luxury car or an SUV, eventually your high-tech suspension system is going to fail. When that happens, here's what you do. It's real simple. Call or click on strutmasters.com, American-made suspension conversion system that solves the problem for a fraction of what you pay at the dealer. The only thing faster than the service at strutmasters.com is Clay Milliken stopping on the loud pedal or perhaps Ronnie Bassett at Texas. And Ronnie is our guest right now on the strutmasters.com hotline. And uh, we continue our chat with Ronnie. Of course, uh, 15th place at Texas over the weekend in the Xfinity Series. Not bad at all. Ronnie, now where is your next start going to be? I would plan on it being Charlotte. Awesome. Home we track. We love that. I love it. That's got to be exciting, too, because coming off what 
I know Texas isn't necessarily the same as Charlotte with the different banking in either of the two ends, but the quad oval feel and, and you know, at least getting some sort of the intermediate track uh, style of racing, it's got to yeah. be, this has to be a positive that you can build on going to Charlotte, I'd imagine. Yeah, for sure, and that's kind of something, you know, we talked about is being able to get, you know, a little bit of mile and a half experience under my belt um, before yep. coming to the hometown where, all the family and friends are going to be at that way we can at least uh have something to build off of when we get there that's got to be fun too for you because of you know not necessarily you lost the the k and n race at bowman gray a couple years ago so to have a race in front of family and friends that's close to home again has got to be pretty fun yeah for sure it's been a while like you said we lost the race at bowman gray and <clears throat> being able to uh Come back to the hometown. It's only an hour from the house, so we can uh, get a good night's rest at home and be back in the track early in the morning. What, what <laughs> has? <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> the truth. Nothing like that, I can tell you. What has the transition? Can't beat it. I know you talked about it a little bit. What has the transition been like, or what are what differences have you felt from the step between the K and N car to running the Xfinity car now that you're a couple races in? Um, you know, the biggest thing is, you know, like I learned this past weekend is the arrow of um, getting um, up on another car, um, losing the nose when you get up behind them and being able to uh, figure out how to maneuver where they're not and still be able to make ground on them and uh, be able to complete the pass without um, getting loose or, you know, uh, taking a chance on uh, hurting yourself or the, the car you're racing. Um, just the, the aero, aero part of the, the Xfinity cars are a lot tougher than the Cadian cars for sure. I would <clears> imagine, <throat> and I also, obviously, the, the quality of the competition is so much uh, different too. And as you say, you had no experience on the mile-and-a-half track until you got to Texas. What was, what was the most surprising part of the whole, what has been, let, let me rephrase that, to read what has been the most surprising part of the the uh the time that you've had in the xfinity series so far yeah for sure the competition is uh, really really tough um you got uh 15 you know 20 good teams out there you know to get to that you know top 10 or top 12 positions is really tough you know when the field separated by two or three one hundredths of a second it's it's very tough um you know i've, I've been able to learn a lot um, the past year in the K&N car with a radial tire, and um, that helped my transition to the Xfinity car, um, being that they switched last year. Um, you know, the biggest thing, just like I said, be the, you know, the aero part's been a big part of it, and um, going to these bigger tracks, it's, it's a lot tougher. You have to, to figure out how to set your pass up sooner and uh, be able to uh, capitalize on it when you get there. Do you think that, uh, I mean, you mentioned Charlotte as being your next starter. That's an, it's kind of an obvious choice, being your home track. What, how much more racing after that do you feel like you'll be doing this season? Um, to be honest with you, we're going race to race. Um, okay. We're looking for part partners um, to be able to make as many starts as we can throughout the year. Um, it's tough being that uh, my dad pays for it all. I mean, he works his tail off every day to – make sure that me and Dylan can do what we love to do. Um, if we could definitely get some people to jump on board with us, we'd run as many races as we can to, uh, you know, you know, have some, good, some good, more good finishes. Ronnie, obviously when you and I first talked about Fe um, Phoenix even being a possibility on the radar uh, was back around Atlanta and that was that was one of the days when I walked into the Xfinity garage, and all of a sudden there you and your brother are uh, helping out with the 90 car at that point. And I know really just that association with with Mario and with the team has been a big catalyst behind behind all of this coming together. Is that something that's been important to you, the opportunity not just to drive the cars but to be a part of working on them as well? Yeah, for sure. You know, and I, I respect Mario Goslin a lot. Um, you know, he's taught me a lot in the short period of time we've been together. Um, we can talk racer to racer. He's been there, done it. Um, he's not going to shoot me astray. You know what I mean? He's he's a well-proven race car driver. And for him to uh, be willing and able to work with us and um, you know, tell me what I need, need to do and don't need to do is a big thing to me. 
um, to be able to have some success in the Xfinity Series um, without people like that, it's hard to uh, hard to accomplish things, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, it is. There's no question about that. Now we we know that obviously you've had some opportunities this year. When are we going to see Dylan on the track, or is there any plans for that right now? Yeah, uh, Dylan will be racing at Richmond. Um, I guess what is it, April 12th or something like that. So oh. not this weekend, but next weekend. Correct. Yes. Okay. Unfortunately, I have to get out of the seat and be the tired guy while he races. He's been <laughs> working his tail off, um, you know, going to Phoenix and uh, Texas. So uh, I look forward to him getting in the car and being able to see what he can do. That's really interesting. So you two are kind of swapping in and out a little bit this season with that car. Yeah, for sure. Um, like I said, we'll, being that I run Phoenix and uh, Texas, we're going to take him to Richmond. And, um I'm not sure where he'll go after that, but uh, we're definitely going to be swapping the seat out. Well, that's great. Uh, it's it's good to see that little brother's getting his opportunity as well, because both of you have the talent to be there. And uh, I know it's a it's a tough go of it. I mean, it's not an inexpensive sport by any means, and uh, hopefully you'll get uh, some opportunities to add to your racing schedule, both of you, uh, with some partners. If somebody is listening to this show and wants to come on board or is thinking about it or is curious about it um how do they reach out to you and talk a little bit about uh your your website social media anything that uh any way that you can allow our fans to get a hold of you yeah um you know both of us are on facebook um instagram and twitter it's ronnie bassett jr um you know we can for sure work anything out you know we're looking for tires or food at the racetrack that allows us to buy more tires anything helps um like i said my dad pays for it all and any uh any kind of help we can get can allow us to uh, run more races throughout the year and uh be able to keep going forward well you guys uh, certainly have uh had a, a great career to this point uh around here uh in the local and regional stuff and certainly proved in knn that both of you are capable of running for wins um you know at that level so it's just an opportunity, you know, has to be the right opportunity, obviously. But hopefully um, you will be able to put something together to keep uh, keep moving here. But we've certainly enjoyed watching you at uh, Phoenix and at Texas. And, and what a difference in the result. Uh, and now going into Charlotte, I'm sure coming off that 15th place at Texas, you've got some confidence now coming into Charlotte in, in May, which is obviously a pretty big deal. Yeah, for sure. Like I said, that experience on the, the mile and a half was pretty big to me. Um, being able to uh, just get to feel a race around other cars on that big of a track, um, knowing what to expect. And um, that way when I get out there for the first time, I can, you know, go hard instead of having to worry about, you know, what's it going to feel like or anything like that. So I'm looking forward to it. It's definitely a confidence booster to know that um, – the guys can bring a really good race car, and we're capable of, you know, running in the top 20 and um, being able to come home in one piece. Well, we're thankful for the opportunity to chat with you just a little bit tonight and glad that you uh, were able to take some time to come on, and we look forward to having you back on again. Uh, we would love, if possible, to get you in the studio around Charlotte time and actually have you come in and talk to us here and sign the Wall of Fame and such. We'll do it. Just give me a call. We'll come in. That sounds good. Ronnie Bassett uh, Jr. And uh, looking forward to seeing what he can do with uh, his start at Charlotte in the Mario Goslin Xfinity Series car. We appreciate Ronnie being on and Jacob Ronnie, an example yes. of a driver who, again, this is a, you know, a family outfit right now that they're that the family's trying to support right. he and Dylan as much as possible to showcase him. So hopefully some other folks decide to jump on board, which I'm sure they can do for a pretty reasonable price. And those two are so marketable too. I mean, they've got the, yeah, they they've are. got the driving talent. They, you know, they're great representatives of the companies that have backed them over the course of their career. You know, just a, just great people in the sport, a great family, and certainly the way they've come back after the shop fire a couple yeah. years ago to be at the level they're at now is uh, and adopting very, the, uh, yeah. the, the the Down syndrome kids too. That's yes. a really big part so of who much the Bassets you know, are. Very encouraging 
situation yes. all the way around. Yeah, it would definitely be a, a really marketable situation for the right company. We'll step aside. When we come back, we go from one young racer to another. Grant Thompson going to join us. This young man is just 13 years old. He's from Alabama, and he's running in a, a regional truck series in that area. Uh, I can't wait for you to uh, get to know this young man. Grant will be joining us on the other side of this break. You're listening to the Stock Car Show presented by HMS Motorsport, the leaders of motorsport safety. Back in a moment. How to be a great dad in 15 seconds. Bike ride, go fish, walk in the park, phone call, milkshake, play catch, picnic, fly a kite, tell jokes, laugh, talk, read a story, tell a story, bumper car, swing set, bowling, pillow fight, cut loose, stay tight. Whew. Because the smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Call 877-4DAD-411 or visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. Automotive technicians and auto service trainees, how would you like to work at the beach and perform for one of the best car care centers in the nation? Lewis Meineke is now looking for skilled automotive technicians to join their award-winning team. If you're a gearhead that knows his or her stuff or a young up-and-comer that has the motivation and drive to succeed, then you need to make this call today, 302-827-2054. Lewis Meineke Car Care Center, located in beautiful Lewis, Delaware, offers a highly competitive compensation plan, great benefits, a flexible schedule, and did we mention that you're going to be working at the beach? Plus, there's a signing bonus for the right candidates. Technicians must be ASE certified and have a minimum of six years' experience. Beginners advance at your own pace in one of several entry-level positions. But whatever you do, don't wait. These jobs will go fast. Call Tim at 302-827-2054. That's 302-827-2054. Lewis Meineke Car Care Center. Rev up your career. You hear that? That's the sound of America's only sports car. That's right. It's a Corvette. But not just any Corvette. It's your Corvette. It's that who cares if there's traffic part of your day. And this can be you when you come to Cooper Corvettes. With 60 years of Corvettes to choose from, there's always a Corvette in your budget. And they'll service any Corvette you bring in. Cooper Corvettes. On Route 1 just north of Quantico in Triangle. Call, click, or visit coopercorvettes.com. How to deal with someone who says that's so gay. Outsmart them. This party is, like, so gay. Totally. Excuse me, but did you ladies know the word gay used to mean happy or excited? Then it became a word used to describe gay people. Then somehow it came to mean dumb or stupid, which is how you just used it, which is not very nice. Ew, that guy is on the football team and super smart, and he totally hates us now. Totally. When you say that's so gay, do you realize what you say? Knock it off. Learn more at thinkbeforeyouspeak.com. This is Anthony Alfredo, and you're listening to the Performance Motorsports Network. Now back to the show. Oh, boy. He was fried pasta on Friday night. <laughs> yeah. Pasta, yeah. He, Anthony was all fired up uh, yeah. during that truck No race. pun intended. I, I want to add, by the way, I texted him. Um, at the end of the weekend, just to, just to make sure he was all good, yeah. because that was probab that was one of the scarier looking crashes For sure. that we've seen in the truck series this year. But before that, Anthony was having a tremendous run in that uh, DGR Crosley entry, and his next start, by the way, conveniently uh, to our last guest, Ronnie Bassett, <laughs> Charlotte is also well. going to be yeah. in Charlotte. Yeah, Anthony uh, Anthony was doing a nice job, and it's just. It's part of the learning curve, and, you know, it's one of those situations where it was really a racing deal, yeah. um, and, and he was running in the top ten when that happened. It, he it was. Just, he did a, was doing a great job. Didn't he have a birthday, too? At Texas. Uh, he did. Um, did Over, he? The okay. Over the weekend. Over the weekend. So he is now 20, I Happy believe. belated birthday. Yeah. Yes. Happy He's now officially birthday. no longer a teenager. That's correct. So uh, happy belated birthday to Fast Pasta, Anthony Alfredo. Not as Fried pasta. Not fried pasta. No, I don't, think, <laughs> I don't think he wants to be fried pasta. Okay, so uh, we continue with the Stock Car yes. Show. And on the Strutmasters.com hotline, now we have young Grant Thompson, who is out of Alabama. And Grant runs in the Southern Pro-Am Truck Series, which runs some of the coolest tracks in the southeast, mid-south area um grant welcome to the program we are really happy to have you on oh thank y'all for having me how are y'all doing tonight we're doing great man and uh we got your picture now up on the screen uh on our facebook live here and uh grant you're just 13 years old how does a 
13-year-old uh, get to a truck series. Talk a little bit about your background in racing and how you got to the uh, truck series you're running. Well, um, yes, sir. It's pretty crazy running on um, a pro truck at um, 13 years old. Um, I, I mean, I'm super thankful that the uh, Sarah Pram Truck Series was letting me run um, at 12 years old. And uh, like you said, we do run at some really fun and crazy tracks. Um, a couple of them are like um, Chris Motorsport Park, um, Highland Run Speedway, um, Brunson Speedway, Mobile International Speedway, um, Montgomery Speedway, all those crazy tracks like that. And, um, yeah, I started off racing when I was about six years old in um, camp carts down at Sunny South Raceway in Grand Bay, Alabama. Okay. And um, our career went pretty well through those. Um, won a track championship, won um, a couple uh, championships down in um, Florida. And uh, as we went through that, we moved on to um, Bandoleros, and those were a really fun experience. Um the truck that I drive is really similar to the Bandolero. It's it's just um a little bit bigger, um a lot faster, and in my opinion, it drives about the same as the Bandolero. But um we did really well in the Bandoleros. Um finished number two in the nation in wow. 2017. Um was the Alabama State champion, Alabama State champion in 2016, 2017, and um. After we were done with the Bandoleros, we weren't really sure if we wanted to go to a, um, a pro truck or a Legends car. And um, my dad had run um, a uh, pro truck around the South a lot, and he already had one. So we thought we might as well just go ahead and put a little bit smaller seat in there and see how I could do. Yeah, I bet it was a lot smaller seat, actually. <laughs> Several yes, sizes sir. smaller. Um, so, so you started what last year, I think, running in the truck series, right? But you didn't run a full season, correct? Right. Um, well, since I was twenty years old when I started, there wasn't really that many series or tracks that would let me run until I was thirteen. But I mean, I really do appreciate um, Mr. Bobby Owens with the Southern Pro and Truck Series um, for giving me the opportunity to to compete at twelve years old with the Southern Pro and Truck Series. Well, I'm sure it was a great opportunity. Yeah. And, I mean, you know, yes, J- Jacob, you, you've seen a lot of these kids just like I have come up and out of the Bandoleros of Legends right. guys. And, and, you know, at 12 years old running, I, I know it's not a full NASCAR truck. It's more right. kind of along the lines of what I think a lot of people would know as an ARCA Midwest truck. Right. Similar. Or, or what they call a pro truck down in a Florida. A pro truck, right. Yep. Similar to that kind of thing. Um, but nonetheless, it's still a big vehicle, and, and for 12 years old, that's pretty amazing. Exactly, which segues into what I was going to ask, Grant. What, you know, as fun as it's been for you, this experience the last two years, what's been the biggest challenge for you racing the truck and kind of adapting to that, the, the size, the speed, how it drives? You know, what, what's, what's been something that you've had to learn to master with those cars? Well, first thing I had to learn about was how to put it in the gear and let out the clutch and get in the gas and just to kind of feel the G-force of the truck and to just, you know, feel how it really handles. And um, one major key I had to learn about it was since I was racing with a lot of older guys, like 20, 30, 40, even 50 years old, I had to earn their respect as a... 12 year old racer because some of those older drivers didn't think that I had it they had the experience or the talent to drive with them and I had to I had to prove them that I could drive with them safely cleanly and then I had to just you know kind of get their trust as a race car driver and that was mainly the biggest competition for me in that series well, I can imagine that that would be quite a challenge, and I would I would also guess that by now, you've pretty much succeeded in earning their trust and respect, right? Yes, sir. I think I have. I mean, you went out uh, this past weekend. You had a double header. Um, you ran it uh, five flags on Friday and had a pretty darn good run. Talk about that race for us. Well, um, we did pretty good um, all through the week. Like Monday and Tuesday, I had school, and then um. 
Wednesday through uh, Thursday, we were practicing at um, both the tracks we had double headers at. And um, at Pensacola, we were um, running pretty fast um, in practice. And, um, I mean, we weren't too far behind the leader. We were about two tenths off the pace. But um, we put on some really good tires for qualifying, and we went out there and qualified pole. And um, that was really a really big achievement for me, first time in that truck at that racetrack. And um, we kind of went on into um, the invert, and it was a uh, it was a four, so I had to start outside row number two in um, the race. And um, we got to the point to where we took the green flag, and um, I think the guy in front of me missed a shift, and that didn't really kill me too much. But um, fifth place got under me going off into one and two, and um, I basically spent the next about 10 to 15 laps trying to get around them and trying to get up to um, the lead. And um, I got up to second at one point, but, but by the time I got up to second, um, first place had about a straightaway on me. And we had about, I'd say probably about six to eight laps to go when I got up to second. So I figured if first place made a mistake and missed his mom throwing in the corner, that I could have a little bit of the chance to catch up to him. But um, it didn't happen, but I feel like overall at Pensacola, we had a really successful night. We had a super fast truck. Um, we had a great crew helping us out, and uh, we ended up having a pretty good overall finish. And again, if you're just joining us, uh, this is young Grant Thompson, just 13 years old out of Alabama. We're talking about his weekend that he just came off of with a Southern Pro-Am uh, truck series. So second place on Friday at Five Flags. It's a great start to the weekend, and he went to Mobile on Saturday. Oh, yes, sir. Um, Mobile was a, a really, really good race. We haven't raced there in a while. It was, it's been a couple months since we raced at Mobile. And um, we went into the, uh, to the race, and um, the track was a little bit different. It was a little bit slower than it normally would be. And um, in practice, we were pretty fast, um, not too slow off the pace, but um, uh, we we didn't have qualifying, so we uh, started fourth in the heat race out of five cars, and um, I didn't really want to uh, burn my tires up in the heat race, so I, I got up to second, so that was really good for us. Um, we had an invert. I, I really didn't know what was going on with the invert, so I ended up starting outside um, pole, and to the inside of me were two of really fast guys who had been pretty big mentors to me. Um, Josh Hicks and Brian Weimer, they've were, they been racing me really hard and really clean, and I really appreciate it. And um, we went into the race, and we were um, running decent. We... Um, Apparently, we uh, didn't really do too well with the tires, and every time I'd try to go up in the corner, the truck would, would go up some, and I lost a, a lot of positions from that, but um, towards the, not towards the end of the race, but with about maybe 15 laps to go, coming out of turn two, we had a little ignition problem. When I hit the gas, the truck just didn't have any gas in it, and it ran out of throttle, and... Um, I couldn't really steer it too well without the power steering, so I pulled off into the grass, and we um, pulled the truck in the pits, and we figured out we had a, a little ignition problem. I oh. thought it was the, <laughs> the main uh, power. I thought the power went out, but um, it was a little problem with the ignition, so we learned some um, issues from that, but... Um, I mean, I'd really like to thank uh, my sponsors, um, Gale Force Suspension, Bama Boring and Contracting, um, Universal Precast, Lewis Lawn and Landscaping. They've uh, really helped us out through the year. Um, I'd like to thank my dad for spotting for me, my mom for taking pictures, um, my crew chief, Bubba Gale, um, most of my crew, Kale Gale, Dale Hammock, e Eddie Hollinsworth, William Wombles, Rexel Larson, and um, Chad Nelson. They, they've been a huge help for us through the um, the past two years of my career. And um, we 
hopefully we can come together to fix that issue so we can go run at Mobile International Speedway this Saturday. Okay, so I have an observation and then an important non-racing related question. So my observation okay. is that, that any, anybody at Grant's age, Tom, that can successfully handle all the information that the Gale family throws at you at a racetrack in, <laughs> any, in any given weekend deserves the utmost respect. Yes. Because they'll, co they'll come at you hard and fast, and if you're not paying attention, you're going to miss a lot of something. That's for sure. So, uh, so bravo, Grant, for that. And m the, the, the question that I have is not racing-related, but it's because you're from the state of Alabama, and we were, talking about, uh, we were talking about sports to kick off the show, basketball specifically. But I have to ask, Alabama or Auburn? Auburn War Eagle. <laughs> yeah, there we go. There we go. <laughs> boy. No, no roll tide for him. I've been I've been watching some March Madness, and I'm pretty proud of my Auburn Tigers from for, for making it to the Final Four in March Madness. <laughs> Look out, son. Yeah. Um, I'll tell you what. If you if, if your Tigers and my Spartans get to the championship game next Monday night, uh, we'll, we'll we'll have some fun on social or something. You know? <laughs> I'll tell you, I'll, that that that'll be fun. Actually, that's the championship game I'm hoping for. Well, it's uh, well, oh, yeah. Yes, you sir. don't want it to be Texas Tech because that means <laughs> the Sparty that means we lost. <laughs> <laughs> I want Auburn over Virginia. Was my yeah, point exactly? Yeah. So, War Eagle. <laughs> War Eagle. That's great. No roll tide for this boy. That a boy. Grant Thompson, <laughs> we appreciate you being on the program, and uh, we'll step I aside. I appreciate y'all having me. We'll we'll talk more with Grant in the future for sure because uh, he was a lot of fun. We'll yes. step aside when we come back. We got more of the show. Stay with us. Parents, your son or daughter has had their license for a while now, but you want to make sure they're prepared for any situation they may face on the road. High school driver's ed doesn't teach them to drive defensively. They need to be prepared for any highway emergency. For less than a month's insurance, and a whole lot less, BSR instructors at Summit Point Motorsports Park in nearby Summit Point, West Virginia, will teach your son or daughter how to respond instantly and positively to unexpected situations on the road. BSR's specialized accident avoidance training teaches swerve to avoid maneuvers at highway speed, ocular driving, which focuses driving attention on ways to avoid accidents, vehicle dynamics and feedback, skid control, and skid recovery, threshold braking on straights and progressive braking on curves, and off-road recovery techniques. This is stuff driver's ed simply doesn't teach so call bsr today 304-725-8444 give your kid the skill set needed to drive safely and responsibly on the highway that's 304-725-8444 you hear that that's the sound of america's only sports car that's right it's a corvette but not just any corvette it's your Corvette. It's that who cares if there's traffic part of your day. And this can be you when you come to Cooper Corvettes. With 60 years of Corvettes to choose from, there's always a Corvette in your budget. And they'll service any Corvette you bring in. Cooper Corvettes. On Route 1 just north of Quantico in Triangle. Call, click, or visit coopercorvettes.com. HMS Motorsport is the leader in motorsport safety. HMS serves the majority of Monster Energy NASCAR Cup, Xfinity, Camping World Truck, IndyCar, and IMSA WeatherTech teams, as well as countless SCCA and club level racers and driving enthusiasts throughout North America. Featuring world-renowned brands like Schubert Helmets, Schroep Belts, Adidas Suits and Shoes, Lifeline Fire Systems, and even Racecom Radio Kits, HMS has the right product for your type of racing and your budget. Their representatives are experts on only one thing, making your track driving as safe as possible. With locations in Mooresville, North Carolina and Danvers, Massachusetts, the HMS staff is always ready to take the time to help you find the right product for your safety needs. Don't settle for second when it comes to motorsport safety. Stop in to HMS Motorsport. Visit them on their website at hmsmotorsport.com or send them a message on Facebook and tell them the folks from PMN Radio sent you. Hi, this is John Androsik of Five for Fighting, here for RAD the entertainment industry's voice for road safety. You know, style is a personal thing, and your lifestyle is your business. But if you take it on the road, it becomes everybody's business. So please, plan ahead, designate before you celebrate. Friends, don't let friends drive drunk. A public service announcement brought to you by RAD, the National Association of Broadcasters, and the Ad Council. 
Hi, I'm Cole Custer, and you're listening to the Performance Motorsports Network, the voice of motorsports. Welcome back to the Stock Car Show presented by HMS Motorsport, the leaders in motorsports safety. And, of course, we want to acknowledge our friends at My Computer Career as well, training for a better life. If you are looking for a career change, I got an idea. Just go to mycomputercareer.edu. You can be an IT professional as little as four months with My Computer Career just four, that's right, four months, and uh, there are a ton of jobs in the U.S. right now that are unfilled that that skill set would qualify you for, and they're good-paying jobs, too. MyComputerCareer.edu, you can take a free career evaluation test to see if that might be right for you. It is training for a better life, and we thank all the folks at My Computer Career for their support. Tom Baker, Jacob Seelman, Randy Miller, and Chris Burdock are behind the scenes, punching buttons audio and video-wise. Uh, Good to see Justin Sullivan back with us again. And uh, if you're just joining us, you just missed one of the funniest, most enjoyable interviews that we'll probably have all year long in this show. Um, Go back on our Facebook Live and uh, watch it once the show ends. Uh, Grant Thompson just did a spectacular job. Just a 13-year-old Alabama racer running in the Southern Pro-Am Truck Series. And I got to tell you, that boy handled... The interview and the media about as well as most of the adults that we've had on this program and should be commended. That was fantastic. Indeed. Yes. Okay. Uh, Time to talk about a subject that is near and dear to my heart. Modifieds. Uh, South Uh Boston style. And I can tell you, when this was announced that they were going to run at South Boston for this year, really, really wanted to make it there. Unfortunately, I just, I've been under the weather for about a week and I, I was not going to travel up there for for a race in my situation over the weekend i just felt it was best to stay home and stay quiet and uh try to get better so uh that's what i did yeah you were sick as well unfortunately um we missed a great race and i gotta tell you ron silk winning a wheel and modified tour event and how about the strategy play by mr southern modified racer Burt Myers. Burt Myers. Dirty who South. Almost Dirty South, who almost pulled off the win without a pit stop. Um, almost. And basically ran the tires until they just screamed at him and said, that's it, we're done. Yeah. Um, but, man, what a race that was. It was a tremendous race. And I want to be clear about something because there's a lot of people acting stunned that Ron Silk could win a NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour race. This is not a new concept. It's not a people. new concept. <laughs> Just not, again, Ron is not one of these guys. When you talk about who you think the top three drivers of the shot to win, you're not putting Ron Silk in that category. Okay, so I want to be clear. The only reason we don't put Ron Silk in that category is because at least uh, up until maybe this year, he's not been a full-timer on the tour. However, (laughs) well, when he lost the Ed Partridge ride to Ryan Priest, he kind of had to drop back and punt for a while. Uh, But he won the NASCAR Wheel of Modified Tour Championship in 2010 in the Ed and Connie Partridge number six. And when that ride went away, Ron uh, kind of dropped back into obscurity for a little while, ended up getting hooked up with Kevin Stewart along the way. Yeah, and now he, him and Kevin Stewart, this race was great for Ron Silk. This race was absolutely phenomenal for Kevin Stewart. Yep. As a car owner, yep. that 85 car has been one of the most iconic vehicles in modified racing in the New England states yep. for a long time. Woody Pitcat's been in that car. Some great names in the sport have been in that car. I think Pastriac was in it at one point, maybe for a handful of races yeah, um, a while back. Yeah. But, you know, Silk's been in the car more recently, and he and Kevin Stewart captured lightning in a bottle at South Boston. Sure did. They played the strategy right. He came to the front. He passed Burt for the win and then held off a determined Chase Dowling, who oh. was in Jamie Tomano's car. Yeah, there's a team. To bring it home. One, yeah. One of the youngest drivers, if not the youngest driver on the tour. One of the youngest. Blake Blake Barney's like 15. Yeah. And, and he looks and, like he's 12. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, he's kind of got... Uh, it's kind of got the, who can we think of that we know? There's a couple guys on the West Coast. You can take your pick that uh, are in K&N or whatever that are like Derek Krause. I was, I was getting ready to 12. say Derek. Sorry, but, Derek. <laughs> but, uh, but, but what I was getting ready to say is one of the youngest drivers on the tour, Chase Dowling, teaming with Jamie Tomano, 
who yeah. wasn't young when I was watching him race at Oswego Speedway in the late 70s, early 80s when he first started coming up right. from New Jersey. The Jersey Jet is what they called him. And, boy, what a pairing that turns out to be. And Dowling gave that car one heck of a ride. He did. Chase is a star in the wheel and he tour. Is. He's not running full-time this year, but he's been – impressive in everything he's stepped in on the tour and he's going to be a threat to win some races and i believe will win a race or two for jamie I think this so. season that'd be but, great to see that know, car back in saturday too it would and sa saturday was about ron silk though and kevin yeah. stewart and what they've built together i don't think anybody ever expected that 85 car to be a winner on the tour you know it, but it was really the last thing in modified racing yeah. that kevin had yet to do and now they've checked that box off and this opens up a very interesting Pandora's box because when you look at this, he's eighth in points, but the win catapulted him to within 15 or 16 points of championship leader Doug Kobe. And I'm going to tell you what's truly interesting when you look at the standings right now. Is not is That's what's interesting. Yeah, everything. It's not Ron Silk, though, that I'm most interested in. It's the guy Ron Silk passed to win that race. Burt Myers, the two-time Southern Wheel and Modified yeah. Tour champion, sits five points behind Doug Kobe right now in the battle for a championship. Eddie Harvey has the Icebreaker 150 as one of the selected races that they plan on going yeah. and running here coming up might even be actually it is this yeah, Sunday I was gonna say, this at, Thompson at Thompson Speedway yeah. Motorsports yeah. Park. I'm going to tell you if Burt Myers comes out holding serve or having a shot at that points lead, it's going to make it. Oh, it boy. I think Eddie Harvey is going to be hard pressed to tell him no. Burt may have a very tough decision to make in the in the realm of possibly chasing a wheel and tour championship that I don't think any of us would have expected he'd be well, in the running for. It's it's a great story and and right? let's not leave out Showtime Jimmy Blewett who sits oh, second. Oh man. And and right that, now. you know Jimmy told me after after uh, after Daytona after uh, Myrtle Beach that that was going to be a race to race deal for them but as long as they were in contention they would try and ride it till it broke. Uh, one point out of first. That's yeah. contention. Yeah, that's contention. So I think right. they're going to Thompson. He and, and the Bertuccio team are just, uh, they've clicked. I mean, it's an interesting, it's good to see Patrick Emmerling having a, a good early start. Um, again, a driver that, that is huge in New York uh, and, and up at, at those tracks, but you don't talk about him so much on the Wheeling Tour. And, you know, he's sitting fourth right now and Chris Pastriak fifth in the standings. So, you know, this is a really interesting tour season the way it started um, it's going to be fun to see who prevails this Sunday at Thompson. And once again, can I say thank you, thank you, and thank you again to FansChoice.tv. TV. Yeah, FansChoice.tv for uh, carrying all of these tour races and K&N and all of that um, live for free. Yes. So those of you listening to or watching the show, if you want to check out a NASCAR modified race. You can watch them all live. Fanschoice.tv is and the place I, to do it. I want to give a particular shout out to Fanschoice.tv. I actually reached out to them on social media. They came on the air early on Saturday and actually gave bonus coverage of the first NASCAR Wheel and All American Series late model stock car race okay. of the day at South Boston and used that time to get their audio levels, their video placement, everything right and balanced for the uh, Wheel and Tour Good race, call. which was the headliner for the day. Their social media and support teams was right on it, taking suggestions from what we were hearing. It wasn't just me. There were a few of us in the media who were, uh, you know, off what we could to help them get it right they were very receptive and uh, you know I want to say personally I appreciate the fact that they were willing to work with us and and put all the time into getting it right not just giving the bonus coverage yes. but trying to make it a great experience for the fans at home I feel and like that's so important and in that race we had a fight. Not that. No, so, not that race. It was the second race. Oh, that's right. It was the second race. It was yeah. not. It was not the race that was yeah. live on Fans Choice TV where there second was a fight. Second model race. Real uh, quick. Yeah. Peyton Sellers versus Lee Pulliam versus a crew member that got thrown out of the racetrack. Yeah. And here was the the big Yikes. debate. 
you know, you you've got you've got uh, uh, you've you've got Pulliam and the and Peyton Sellers, which you know Philip Morris for all intents and purposes, and you know these guys have a little set to on the track, and the crew chief, um, Peyton Sellers, I think it was, wasn't it Peyton or was it the no, it was the crew chief, I guess. It was the crew chief. The yeah. Sorry, it was. I'm sorry, it wasn't Peyton Sellers. It was you Philip were, you were right. It was Philip Morris. It, it, sorry, it, it was, it, and he climbs inside the passenger side of Pulliam's car. Yeah, and then of course Pulliam takes off, and pretty much the guy gets thrown out of the car into the yep. track, and everybody has the nerve to act surprised. That Pullian would do such a thing. And, oh, by the way, that led to a fight in the pits. That led to a fight in the pits. Well, because that's what we do. And, look, I'm just going to say this once. If you're going to climb in my race car and mess with my stuff inside my car or try to attack me in the car, I'm going to do the same exact thing Lee Pulliam did. He got exactly what he yeah. deserved. We've seen this too many times. Stay with your own race car. Yep. Don't go after a guy in the race car on the racetrack. That's just not very smart. With that, we're going to step aside. When we come back, we're going to talk about something else that I, can, <laughs> I don't think is very smart either. Uh, we'll have more of the Stock Car Show right after this. When do you think of a plumber? Like most people, even if it's an emergency, you can be confident about who will arrive to help you. For quality and reliability, count on someone you can trust. Call on the plumbing services of Haig Quality Water of Maryland. Plumbing doesn't have to be an emergency. We handle all kinds of preventative maintenance, too. Haig Quality Water of Maryland is family-owned here in Annapolis since 1993. For a refreshing choice, call us at 888-84-WATER or visit us online. Here at Lewis Meineke, we're more than just your average car care center. Hey, it's Dave, your neighbor from Lewis Meineke. Whether you need an oil change, brakes, tires, or anything under the hood, we've got you covered. Take advantage of our free check engine light service as well. Yes, free. And don't forget about our free shuttle service. Never stress, we'll take care of the rest. On with life. Give us a call at Lewis Meineke, 302-827-2054. Is your job sucking the life out of you? Wake up. You can do something else. Information technology. I know what you're thinking, but I'm not a math and science person. No problem and no excuses. Because it's not rocket science. It's my computer career. Go to mycomputercareer.edu and take the free career evaluation today. You can start your new life as an IT pro in as little as four months. Mycomputercareer.edu. That's mycomputercareer.edu. Do you love the sound of high revving motors and the smell of burning rubber? Do you want to get your car sideways right at the ragged edge of control? If you've always wanted to try drifting or learn to improve your drifting skills, Summit Point Motorsports Park, the Mid-Atlantic's premier motorsports facility, has the expert instructors and the specialized track to teach you how to drift and the skills necessary to drift competitively. From skid pad to open sessions, Summit Point Motorsports Park has the safe and open environment that allows drifters of all skill levels, new to intermediate, to get sideways and smoking. With a focus on safety and the skill set necessary to drift competitively, Summit Point Motorsports Park's Drift Nirvana is just the thing for you. Call for your reservation today, 304-725-8444. Or for more information, go online, summitpoint-raceway.com or you can email them at office at bsrinc.com. Drift Nirvana, getting you sideways the right way. If you own a gun, you have a full-time responsibility. When you aren't using it, be sure it can't get into the hands of curious children, troubled teenagers, a thief, or anyone else who might misuse it. Your family, friends, and neighbors are all counting on you. Remember, always lock it up. For more information on firearm storage safety, visit ncpc.org. This message brought to you by the National Crime Prevention Council, the Bureau of Justice Assistance, and the Ad Council. Hi, I'm Cody Connor, and you're listening to Race Chaser Radio. Now back to the show. <laughs> Welcome back to the Stock Car Show. It's our lightning round and a bit of an abbreviated one as well because we went long in our opening segment C -C of the show this evening. But Yeah, uh, we got a little excited. For those of you who are still with us, we appreciate that. And if you're just joining us, this is the Stock Car Show. Tom Baker, Jacob Seelman, we got Randy Miller and Chris Burdock over there in the tech shed punching buttons. And Hang on. brought to you if, by HMS Motorsport, the leaders, the leaders in motorsports, motorsports safety. safety. 
Yes. Usually I'm better at that. Yes. Oh, well. Um, so anyway. I w- the point I was going to make was if they're just joining us, they missed a heck of a show. Oh, they have. I mean, it's been great. We had Ronnie Bassett Jr. on. We had Grant Thompson, who was just phenomenal, 13-year-old Alabama racer on. And uh, so please go back and, and catch up uh, on our Facebook Live or any one of our yes. uh, digital um, sources yes. as well. If you want to just listen to the show, we were talking about uh, South Boston in the yes. last segment. I wanted to... I- Go ahead. Hang on. Be- you gonna- Before you get away from South Boston, I have a modified point that I want to inject into the okay. start of our Let's lightning round here. Quickly. So, question number one for our lightning round. After two races, Timmy Salamito and Justin Bonsignor, who are largely considered two of the heavy hitters for the championship yep. every year, are 17th and 18th in points. They're tied in the championship right now, and they are both nearly a full race back already in the wheel and tour standings can either or both of them still contend for the title can they yes Uh, obviously they can mathematically Uh, i don't believe timmy does um just haven't seen enough dominance out of that team that he could get on a run and win several races but i do believe justin bonsignor can uh, What's interesting again, to me he's... is Timmy Salamito has a top 10 finish in two races. Justin Bonsignor does well, not. Well, I know, but uh, we watched Justin last year, and I think I, I think Justin has the opportunity and has the speed to go on a roll. Uh, but he's going to have to do it quick because yeah. there's a lot more parity this year on the tour than there's been. So oh, absolutely. It's going to be much harder to do that. I mean, when you look at the fact that four of the top seven right now are drivers that I would never have put up there no. at this point in the year. Burt Myers being third, five points back. Patrick Emmerling, who is another one yep, who I could, last segment. I could see potentially making a run at the championship if he chooses to. Chris Pastriak being top five in points and single digits out of the lead already is incredible. Um, and Anthony Nocella, who is another yeah. one who's really impressed me so far right there. Seventh in points. Those, you know, the top seven in points are the only drivers who've completed every lap yeah. through two races. This okay. Year. So I want to transition here because yes. you you came across an article. I did. Uh, before the show started, I said this is perfect for our lightning round. Yeah. Um, because we always like to, you know, the lightning round is supposed to be a debate. So Jenna Fryer from Je- the AP – has Jenna. written an article Jenna, um, Jenna. that basically <laughs> as much as says, Dear DW, get out, please. Um, she, Jenna basically <laughs> wrote Daryl's broadcasting obituary. There's been a rumor over the last couple of weeks that DW may announce his retirement from the, from the Fox booth, from the broadcast booth uh, at the end of this year. And so Jenna was, I think she was the first to actually put that rumor out there. But I believe that's correct. She's written this article um, that, I mean, I've only read half of it, but it's all I need to read to understand what the tone of it is and, you know, what her intention is. And honestly, look, um, I... I'm not going to be nasty to Jenna Fryer here, but um, I am going to make a simple point. Jenna Fryer is no better than you or me or Randy or Chris or anybody else. There are some motorsports media that I think fancy themselves to be above everybody else in the sport, and somehow, you know, they should have the right to go and write this kind of an article about Daryl Waltrip, who is who you know, pick any day that he's been involved in the sport and he's done more for the sport in that day than Jenna Fryer and most of the rest of us have in our entire lifetimes. I don't care what you think about Daryl Waltrip as a broadcaster. I mean, maybe, you know, it is time for a change, but I feel like this article completely lacks one of the key words for me, respect. Absolutely. And... You know, Absolutely. somebody on social media over the weekend said something about Jenna as if she was actually being considered as his replacement. Now, I, 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 I mean, please, Fox, really? I, I hope no. that was not. I hope I misread that. because I, I think you did. Um, you know, but. Uh, well, look. I'll tell you what's interesting is the, the rumors of Daryl's retirement. I'll get into my opinion about. Jenna's column in a minute 
Uh, but the rumors about Daryl's retirement have been so magnified and thrust into the spotlight that both Kevin Harvick and Kevin's manager have had to come out and make statements in the past two weeks that right. Kevin is under contract until 2021 and could, or through 2021 rather, and could in no way even be considered as right. DW's replacement, even if he wanted to be, which Kevin said in a press conference Friday at Texas, he's not, you know, he loves doing the broadcasting stuff right now for a bit, but it's not, you know, he's not ready for that full-time step for a while. He still has a lot he wants to do in the race car, and I believe Kevin is still, I believe Kevin still has another championship or two in well, him, he's, frankly. He's got it. He, I mean, you know, he's got two, three, four, five good years left, if that, yeah. at least a couple. I mean, if that's what he wants to do. Oh, for sure. But I guess, you know, my point here is, is everybody has, has the right to, to obviously write what they want, whatever, and I'm not going to disagree that, that Daryl, I think, you know, we're far enough removed from his time in the car where, you know, I think Daryl, Daryl has what I call Darylisms. You know, he has yeah. a shtick. And I think putting Jeff Gordon in the booth kind of moved Daryl to third chair. And I think that's perfect because I think that the chemistry between him and Jeff and Mike is actually really good. And I'm not saying that a change wouldn't be wouldn't be okay. I mean, if you can find somebody who can be better than DW, who can actually elevate that team or elevate the broadcast, fair enough. And you know what? If Daryl Waltrip has decided that it's his time to step away and just enjoy the rest of the time that he has left, you know, on, on earth, then God bless him for it. And nobody should be disrespecting him or right. speaking ill of him, you know, fine, you know, poke fun at some of the things he says. He pokes fun at some of the things he says, you know, whether you like him or you don't, the man has contributed way more to this sport than any of us will ever contribute that matters. And so, you know, I just, I think Jenna Fryer honestly is, I mean, again, she has the right to write it. I have the right to say I think it was very disrespectful the way that in the tone and, and you know the right. the way that she wrote it. Um, and I, I don't know who Jenna thinks she is to to go and write that sort of a right. thing. You know, I just thought it was inappropriate. So, my favorite tweet on the subject, <laughs> and I'm not just saying this because I enjoy what comes on a regular basis from the cone, but from the orange cone. I don't know what Daryl Waltrip's plans are, but I will say this. The sport and its fans are richer for having him be a part absolutely. of it as long as he has. Yep, absolutely. And you know what? If he chooses to be a part of it for another year or two years and Fox is willing to bring him back, great. I have no problem with that. Um, you know, I, I, I feel like Daryl, again, as a driver, as a team owner, you know, he's right. given a lot to the sport and done a lot for the sport that nobody else knows about. Absolutely. So, you know, I just felt like that was completely out of line. Um, I have respect for Jenna Fryer for, you know, where she is, the fact she's an AP or whatever. But, you know, I just thought that was out of line. If any of you that want to check it out, it's out there. Just uh, go to the Associated Press and, um, and, and look it up and, and you can judge for yourselves. Okay. We've got just a couple minutes left. Um, we, we didn't get a lot of time to dissect the Texas Cup race. Right. I don't think any of us were terribly surprised Denny Hamlin won. But um, I feel like the bigger surprise was Team Penske just all had issues. This was sort of their drop race, I feel yeah. like. Uh, to, to use an iRacing term, yeah. you're right. This was their drop race. Yeah. Uh, you had Keselowski and Blaney both in the garage area with mechanical issues, and Logano was a factor for a while, but once the team cars went out, it seemed like the uh, Logano's car went away somewhat, and they could just never find it again. But this is still the year of JGR and Team Penske. They've combined now to win the first seven races of the NASCAR Cup Series season, the longest streak by two teams dominating the win column in Cup Series history. I mean, this is not this is not something that has been seen before, and I see no reason for it to not continue this weekend. Kyle Busch is a seven-time winner at Bristol. He's won two of the last three. Joey Logano and Brad Keselowski have both won at Bristol yep. in the last three years. Game on. 
Okay, we've got uh, less than a minute here. The only closing thought I'm going to add to this is Orange County Speedway, Rougemont, North Carolina, this coming weekend, Cars Tour, $30,000 to win. Yes. That's enough to get me there, that's for sure. So hopefully we'll see you there. Jacob, close us out. All right. We want to thank our partners uh, at HMS Motorsport, the leaders in motorsport safety, as well as mycomputercareer.edu and strutmasters.com for everything they do to make this show possible. And right now we're going to pay a nod to Chris Murdoch and Randy Miller behind the glass. And for this guy next to me, Tom Baker, I'm Jacob Seelman reminding you to keep it off the wall. And if you're headed to a racetrack this weekend, we might just see you there. Have a safe racing weekend, folks. Good, Good night. night. You've been listening to the Stock Car Show on the Performance Motorsports Network. Stay tuned to Performance Motorsports Network for more race talk. For the latest motorsports news, visit racechaseronline.com. The Stock Car Show is a copyrighted production of the Performance Motorsports Network. www.performancemotorsportsnetwork.com. A member of the Scorpion Radio Group Incorporated. And may not be rebroadcast, replicated, or saved in any media without the explicit written permission of PMN. Check out our Facebook page or our section on the PMN website. The opinions expressed on this program are those of the host, co-host, and guests, and do not necessarily reflect those of the management and ownership of either the Performance Motorsports Network or Scorpion Radio Group Incorporated, the advertisers, or the marketing partners. Be listening again next week when the Stock Car Show returns on Thursday night at 7 Eastern. Until then, stay tuned for more great motorsports programming on the Performance Motorsports Network. <laughs>